So what do you call yourself? Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Hey. Hey, what can I do for you this fine day? This is your destiny. Hot, hot, hot. Right now. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Kick it. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Right now. We gon' party like no one else. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Hey now, what you say now nah, is the voice inside your speaker box, LaTangela Faye. And thank you so much for taking this time out of your schedule to hang out with me for a while. While we'll unplug, unwind, we'll tap in, you know, to see what's going on, who's making headline news and why. And you never know who's going to be in the hot seat or on the tan line. But, you know, this week we're going to talk to a heavy hitter. Not only is she a wife, she's a mother, she's an entrepreneur, but she is a three-time national champion when it comes to being a speaker. So she's getting the message clear. And on top of that, she is helping us etch out all of our ideas and to push the initiative forward together. My girl, Abby Kish. You think you know you have no idea. When it comes down to Kish Consulting, you cannot afford to miss this conversation. We're going to finish this year a lot stronger than we started. Oh, dear, life is out here life in, and we are taking this thing and shifting it around for the better. You know, I have to say thank you. Going out to my community partners with Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys. We have our initiative of Gordon Gives, Tan Cares, where we highlight nonprofit organizations and community stakeholders that's really going above and beyond to make it happen, to get it done. If you work with some of these nonprofit organizations or if you would like to nominate one, I would love to hear more about all of the things that we can do to bring some funds, have some fun, and make it happen together. Be sure to drop me your line at latangela at getgordon.com. We got Gordon, now let's get it done. <laughs> you know, my friends over at Hair Queen Beauty Super Center, we're doing something pretty amazing in this season. Our first braid-a-thon is going to be so much fun. Thank you to all of the braiders and master stylists that have signed up to volunteer their gifts, their time, their talents in order for us to serve our community. We appreciate you so much for that. For all of the details, I want you to log on. Be sure to check it out on the Insta, their Facebook, Sign up to RSVP for little girls and little boys to be able to get their hair braided and fresh cuts right before school. So be sure to check it out with Hair Queen. You know, as the week goes on, I come across with different random research. Sometimes it'll make my desk and I'm like, who gets paid to conduct this type of random research? Who? <laughs> and are they hiring? Because I have questions that need answers, but at the same time, come on y'all, we got to do better than this. Who's America's favorite action hero? Indiana Jones tops the list. Maybe because he's a familiar name, maybe because of the longevity of the franchise. I'm here for it. Captain America also tops that list. You have John McClane with Die Hard. You have Luke Skywalker and John Wick. John Wick probably let me down a little bit with the last one, but you know, I mean, it's only so much John Wick can do and it's still unwickable and I still watched it and I'm still here for the next if he comes out with it too. So yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Today, the Taste of Tange is being brought to you by the Journal of Effective Disorders. It's a research publication that's just stemming into our happiness through our health because health is wealth, right? Well, let's talk about it. Fruits beat vegetables any given day, at least when it comes to depression. Did you know eating more fruit but not vegetables is linked to a lower risk of depression? Sometimes you may be walking around trying to figure out what's going on. It very well could be internal and dealing with some of the foods that you're consuming. We have a couple of things that we can drop in as gems. Now, the reason may be that fruits are more often uncooked so they keep more beneficial micronutrients. That's what they say. I'm going to give you the real. It's more so fruits linked to a happier place than the vegetables because fruits are sweeter. My brain tells me that it's more like candy and it makes me happier. That's my random research. It has been conducted. It is so. 
<laughs> the results actually came from analysis of almost 8,000 people that they've been living on six different continents and some were followed up for almost a decade. So it's got some legitimacy to it. I'm with it. But either way, get your fruits and your veggies and make sure that you're hydrating because that's important. According to Woman's World, make sure that you get enough water because your body is definitely dependent on it. And the sun, the sun is winning. It'll help keep your brain intact. Researchers found that people who were hydrated more, they made 50% fewer errors than when they were dehydrated. Because you're not yourself when you're not functioning at your highest. See, I'm a water posted right there. You see that? Aha, uh -huh, got it handy. You don't just rely on it for drinking water either. You want to make sure that you eat more produce and that you're enjoying soup-like um foods that's going to enhance you to just say, I need to consume more liquids, consume more water. And when I read through that woman's world, I was like, mm, I think I can do that, especially for these summer months. So sure, why not? <laughs> summer Olympics, they're here. If you had to pick your favorite summer Olympic sport, what would it be? I walked around the office and I've been asking this question for the past two days and everybody is doing like the same top five. So let's just see if you made the cut with this. The favorite Summer Olympic Games so far, gymnastics, topping the list. I'm here for it. Followed by track, swimming, women's soccer, water polo, men's basketball, and team volleyball. And that's coming in from Ranker. So if Ranker said it, it's got to be legit. I'm here for it. <laughs> One of the things that's causing the most havoc right now around the crib and the office is that thermostat. What temperature should the thermostat be stuck on? Well, coming in from a study with direct energy, they said now is the time to just leave it at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. That's considered the best house tempo in the winter. But for the summer months, they're saying 78 degrees because that's going to give people bodies enough time to adjust and we'll be okay. I don't know. That's the conversation up for grabs. Either or, make sure that we have a clear understanding. If I need this blanket, just bring me the blanket. Quit playing with my thermostat. <laughs> Coming up, we're going to chat with my girl, Abby, and I don't want you to miss the conversation. If you would like to be a guest, be sure to submit your information at latangela.com. Keep it locked right where you have it. Hey, now what you say? Now, welcome back to another episode of the Latangela Show podcast. You never know who's going to be in the hot seat or on the tan line, but let me tell you something. I need to know who's in the room. Hello. Now, now <laughs> the first things first, she is not afraid to tell you I am here. I am here and I am on a mission, none other than the Abby Kish. How are you? I'm good, Miss Angela. How are you? I'm holding on. <laughs> you know, it really does my heart well to have this time together. Um, we've had uh, a, a few encounters. You know, the first most memorable would have to be at the Invest Her 2024 Summit. Yes, ma'am. Major props going out to my girl Mink, pulled mm -hmm. together some phenomenal women making things happen. And you showed up, you showed out, you let your presence be known. And once I started reading about Abby, I was like, what is Abby doing with her life? She's enhancing the lives of others. Mm -hmm. She's getting the business clear. As a wife, as a mother, as an entrepreneur, as a three-time national champion award yeah. speaker, I'm like, okay, cool. Kish Consulting, you've worked with major brands to help them get their business on one accord. How did you know that this was more than just a hobby for you, but this was a way of life for you to be able to help others enhance their vision? I love that question. It's a great way to start. It really came from a divine moment. I mean, I was in competitive speech and debate. My mom dragged me kicking and screaming from the time I was 12 years old. Stop. So I worked really, really hard. Um, I did that for years and years. And then, thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. And then at 18 years old, I had an opportunity to speak in front of 1,500 people. What? Yes. And wait, wait, was, wait. Now, did you volunteer to do that at this point? Or were you still having to be just... Hey, no, do it or else. At that point, I was all in, but I okay. had just won a national championship title. So they gave me the stage to say, let's prove that you deserve this title and show us your skills. Okay. So I had to stand up in front of 1,500 of my peers and say, I just won the title. Now let's see what I got. And let me tell you, I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to throw up or pass out backstage. No idea. No idea. But when I got up on that stage, it was like a wave of peace came over me. And God said, 
this is your path and this I love is what that. you're going to do. And then when you graduate high school and go into the real world, there were just so many people that didn't have these, the skill set that I had developed in high school. And I knew that that's where the business aspect of it was going to come from. Abby, did you realize growing up was a trap? I was like, we were in a rush to grow up. We want to get there now. Homework oh. is so overrated. I can't wait until I'm out of this piece. And next thing you know, you know, here it is. Oh, yeah. And I've got a three and a half year old at home. And she tells me, mommy, I'm going to grow up. And I said, oh. no, you're not. You're not oh. allowed to. She said, oh. don't be sad about that. I'm going to grow up. And I wish I could tell her, slow down, girl. You're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay though. We're gonna help her enhance those moments right now mm -hmm. because time is but a vapor. You yes, know what I mean? Absolutely. And before you know it, it's all a blur. And she's on these national stages doing whatever oh, yeah. it is that that little spirited thing is ready she's to roll. She's gonna be way better than I ever was. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't just say great graces with that. Um, as you have gone on to compete. When it comes down to these pitches, so many people, they'll talk about you have an idea, but you're sitting on it. You can't properly plan it out to get it from here to here to here. How, how do you take it step by step to help those with a vision turn it into a reality? Well, we were just talking before this interview how much we love paper, right? So I tell somebody who has a good idea, you first got to get it on paper. And a lot of people, when they're prepping for a really important presentation, they start by actually writing. They go to the computer, yeah. they start typing the notes, writing out the script. They start with the PowerPoint. But yeah. I tell somebody with a good idea, you got to just get in a space where you let your thoughts flow and you come up with your very best material. So Absolutely. I call that the discovery process where you brainstorm everything you know and everything you're passionate about. You put it all in one and then you can see where all the pieces are and put them together. So That's good. it starts with vision and dreaming and realizing everything that you've got and putting it all in one place on paper. And you know, I love that. It sounds good in theory, but you've walked through this mm -hmm. several times and you've had these pitch ideas and then you've had these pitch presentations. Walk me through the process of saying, okay, I'm preparing for this pitch because everyone is looking for something different, but there has got to be some type of a template that makes us feel secure in what we're doing. Absolutely. So I always start by identifying who my audience is. Okay. Uh, what do they need to hear? Um, do they need to hear about how my business is going to grow fast? Or do they need to hear that this product is for them? So I always start with who am I talking to? What do they need to hear? Okay. And then I identify how much time do I have? So sometimes I've got 10 minutes. Sometimes I've got 20 minutes. Sometimes I only have one minute. Oh, and girl, 60 seconds. Hey. Uh, it's, it's tough. So I identify who my audience is, how much time do I have? Then I go to that sheet of paper and I plug and play and I put all the pieces in there. And that's something that I do as a coach. I help people yeah. get clarity around what is their vision? What is their brand that they're trying to pitch? And then packaging it in a way that is short and simple and succinct so that their message really lands with their audience. And even as a coach, per pitch, per person, everything, it changes. Mm -hmm. There is no cookie cutter situation for this. Yeah. So how do you stay in your level of creativity to be able to facilitate that? I love that. I ask a lot of questions with, uh, with my clients, like, who are you? What okay. makes you passionate? And I try to identify one thing that I will tell, which I, which is why I think that you and I got connected. Cause I saw you up on that stage at investor <laughs> and I said, she's one of my people right there, but you got to identify where your strengths are yeah. as a speaker. And a lot of people will try to hide that. I worked with a lot of Southern Louisiana people who yeah. are afraid of their accent. Coming okay. Out, okay. And I tell them, no, let that shine. That's part of what makes you, you. So yes, yes there is structure. There's your three points. There's your conclusion. There's your, there's all this structure that goes into it. But you've got to identify what makes me unique and what is a strength of mine. So, girl, if you make people laugh, make people laugh yeah. every single time. If you can tell a good story, tell a good story yeah. every single time. So uh, that's how we stay unique is we identify what is something that every time I talk in front of people, I feel really good about. Yeah, I can always make somebody laugh. I can always tell a good story. Do that every time. And I know for a fact that they always leave better after they've had an Airbnb encounter. <laughs> You know, I do you, my best. You, you do your best, but you do it in the spirit of excellence and it's just who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't even have to give that an introduction because you pull the best out of others naturally. Yeah. And that's a gift, you Thank know, you. and to be able to show that to others. Mm -hmm. Girl, listen, I applaud you for it. Well, thank you. And when you're working with those who may feel as if, you know, I'm coming up with this wonder brick, but then 
You got too many different brands of bread on the same shelf. How do you show them the uniqueness in their products, the uniqueness in their pitch to not feel as if they're competing in an oversaturated market, but they're bringing something new in a lane that has not been tapped into yet? That's a great question. I call that your moment storytelling. So okay. I like founders that. and business owners who I work with, I trace them all the way back to the moment that they realized that their product or service was needed. Okay. Because if they, if something on the market already existed, they wouldn't have had that moment. So obviously there was something about what they're doing that makes them unique. And so I call it your moment storytelling. Identify what your moment was that made you realize this was needed. And we not only flesh that out to help them with that competitive edge, but also to lend perspective to the audience of yeah. this is where I was at when I realized that this was a need. Now, one of the challenges that I know that I come across when you're helping others build their brands and find their voice and be able to tell their story in their way, mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes the level of expectancy is that, you know, once you tell me, I just expect it to go. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> you see where I'm going with this, right? Yes. I can help you get to a certain part, a certain point, however, if you do not put gas in the tank, the ignition will not start. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So talk, talk a little bit about keeping those ideas and the motivation and the consistency on all parts where it needs to be. Well, the great thing about communication is that we're doing it all day, every day. And so <laughs> what I tell my people is maybe, maybe you haven't thrown yourself into the deep end where you're ready to get up on stage yet, mm -hmm. but you're not going to learn the skills that you need in order to do that unless you start right now. So for example, if I've got a client who's really nervous and they have social anxiety, yeah. we start by, I want you to give your cashier eye contact the next time you okay. check out with your groceries. Uh, I want you to have a conversation with your barista. Okay. And so no matter what it is, uh, I use the word intention. That's how you stay motivated. I love it's it. In every conversation, how am I leveling up the way? that I'm speaking. And Girl. if you're not willing to do that, then you're not, you're not ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? Those are simple facts. And it's like getting back to the basics. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we believe in this hashtag retweet. It's such an instant gratification type of situation in life right now. Mm -hmm. People will tell you the success stories. They will show it to you in a perfected reel. However, they're not going to be real with you to tell you, look, I was up three o'clock this morning struggling. Okay. I had no idea. I had a vision. Didn't even know if God heard me. So I wasn't sure if the pro vision was coming or no. Yeah. You know, and in those moments when you have the idea, but you just feel as if you are on this island by yourself. Because, you know, we pour into everybody else. Mm -hmm. But then when we're tapping out, who, girl, how do you find your level of motivation to just say, you know what, Abby, girl, we got this. I'm, I'm checked in. I'm not checking out. It may be a little uncomfortable right now. I may have to go back to my drawing board. What does that look like for you in this crazy world? So it, this is a principle that I treat, teach my clients, but I also live by. And okay. that is finding clarity in your purpose. Mm -hmm. So knowing why are you on this earth? Why are you doing what you're doing? And when I am faltering, I, I cling to what that, what that purpose is for me. And for me, that means... Uh, my purpose is to make sure that people's dreams don't fail because they can't talk about them. I love it. So anytime I don't want to show up for myself or anytime I want to check out, I think who is missing out on their dream because they don't have the confidence to talk about it or because they don't know how mm. to put three sentences together. That's good. That's so that good. keeps me going. But then I'm also the most authentic, vulnerable person you will meet. So if we, <laughs> okay. if we talk for more than 15 minutes, you're hearing my life story because I know the power of that vulnerability. Yeah, And I yeah. want people to hear where I'm at in my life so that they can grab onto that and use it as their stepping stool to get to where they need to go as well. So. You know what? We're going to touch on that in a second. <laughs> Look, I'm going to have to hold you here a little while longer. You got time for me? I got time. All right, good. And I want you to keep the lock right where you have it. If you have questions that need answers, you know, I do my best to get the best of the best in the hot seat, you know, the tan line. Abby Kish today. So keep it locked right where you have it. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Latina Split Show podcast. You know, we've been chopping it up with none other than my girl, my newfound cousin on AT Miriam's side, <laughs> Abby Kish of Kish Consulting. You are a gem, a plethora of resource when it comes down to making it happen and getting the vision clear, right? And dear life, we are mid or more than midway through 2024. 
No, Time transparency, flies. right? So this is the year I'm supposed to fix my life. Mm -hmm. I have yet to begin. <laughs> so <laughs> if we plan on finishing 2024 a lot stronger than we started, what does that look like to say that, you know, I have a short-term goal and I, I love to call goals going over all little steps just to keep it top of mind. So even if we're getting off track a tad, we can bounce right back and get to the vision. Um, help me etch that out because on a professional side, we have issues balancing that mm -hmm. because personally we're struggling. Yeah, absolutely. That's a loaded question. It is like a potato. You know, we could have an hour long discussion about that, but I will just <laughs> tell you this. Uh, it's a loaded question because 2023 was my worst year ever. Wow. Um, personally, professionally, all of the above. Wow. 2024, my best year ever. Yeah. And that doesn't usually happen where you got your worst and then your best yeah. back to back. And the reason why I point that out is because in 2023, I felt like I was failing. I was like, man, I'm not showing up for my business. I had a goal to reach my first six figures. It I mean, it didn't even remotely happen because yeah. of all the things going on. But every life day, life. life is life. -ing. Yeah. <laughs> so every day I just tried to make one small good decision. And sometimes I couldn't even bring myself to do that. And I just thought, man, these steps, they aren't taking me anywhere. And yeah. I, I feel so frustrated that I didn't live up to who I wanted to be. You know, everybody's got uh, 2023, I'm going to fix my life. 2020, right? I'm going to do it this year. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that was going to be me last year and it didn't happen. But I still took baby steps. And girl, when 2024 hit, those baby steps started snowballing into momentum. I love it. And that turned me into my best year ever. So I think my advice is that you don't always have to be 110% full throttle. Some of your years are not going to look exactly like you want them to, but those itty bitty baby steps that you think aren't making any impact in the moment, they are adding to that snowball effect that is going to turn into massive momentum that you're going to look back on in the last six months and have no idea how you got to where you are. Girl, I received that. I, re I received that. I don't know if that was for you, but that was definitely for me. Thanks, sis. Thank you. I needed that. I needed you today. You are the energy that shifts the atmosphere. You know, a simple reminder just by being who you are. And even though, you know, this is what we like to listen to when people say, oh, it's such dark times. It's not what we have beacon of light such as yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So just keep showing up, not just for yourself, not just for your family, but for the world who is depending on people with hearts like yours. And I know that right now there's a company that may be watching or mm -hmm. there's someone that says I have this vision or I might be preparing for my first pitch yeah. and I need to ask a three-time national champion because I only send the best. Uh -huh. I mean, like, you know, I'm trying to get with the champion square. Yes. Um, if they want to contact you and see how they can audition, because everybody can't come. No. You got to be ready. You have mm -hmm. to be coachable. You have to be transparent, not just with yourself, but with Abby. And give yourself that grace. So if they're willing to step up and come play yep. in the champion square, how can we contact you? You can go to my website, abbykish.com. That's A-B-B-E-Y-K-I-S-H.com. And I offer a free 30-minute consultation to anybody who uh, wants to have a conversation. And so you are perfect for me if you are a business owner or a founder who wants their idea to resonate. Uh, if you want to branch into a new market or grow your business, whatever it is, we got to get your confidence to a point where you can put yourself out there yeah. and pitch yourself no matter where you are, who's in front of you or how much time that you have. But I also work with entire teams and corporations. So Good stuff. you're pitching yourself all the time, whether it's uh, internally, you're pitching yourself to be able to have the confidence to show up on the job and to get the next sale. You're, you're pitching yourself with your team when it comes yeah. to collaboration and conflict conversations. And you're always pitching yourself to potential customers as well. So I work with corporations and teams on, on how do you trust yourself to communicate to the best to represent who you are and who your business is. Hey, sounds like a plan to me. Did you put her on speed dial yet? Log <laughs> on, everybody has a little device in their hands. Abbykish.com. Again, that's www.abbeykish.com. And I have everything in the description of the Latangela Show podcast. I want you to think of this as an extension of your office. So whenever you have things going on, you feel free to jump in the hot seat on the tan line. Say, girl, look, we are planning this year out. We got things to do, lives to enhance, and we're here for it, okay? Okay. All right, okay. now, I know you got more work to do, so I I'm going to let so you chase more. the sun or <laughs> let the sun chase you, but either way, get after it. 
I love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. <laughs> now look, if you would like to be a guest, I'd love to hear from you. Be sure to submit your information at latangela.com. Be sure to check out these podcasts. Thank you so much to none other than Cumulus Media, WASB Plus, and you can find us bootlegged if you need to, but just join the conversation. Okay? Keep it locked right where you have it. Yeah. <laughs>